So this video is going to be about communities and community interactions. So first we'll talk about what a community actually is. So a community is going to be all of the organisms that inhabit a particular area and that's not going to uh, be limited to organisms that belong to the same species. It's going to be uh, all of the different species that live in an area as long as they live close enough to be able to uh, have the opportunity to interact with one another. And so now that we have a better idea of what a uh, community is, we can look at how these different organisms within a community actually interact. So these interactions are called interspecific interactions, which means interactions between species. And so, uh, like I just said, it's going to be a relationship between individuals of two or more species within a community. So some examples of those kinds of interactions would be competition, predation, herbivory, parasitism, mutualism, and commensalism. So first we'll look at competition. So competition is going to be a minus minus interaction. And so this notation uh, minus slash minus indicates that uh, in this relationship both organisms involved in this interaction are uh, negatively affected. So in competition you're going to have individuals of different species competing for a resource that both of those species need. And so there are a couple ways that organisms can actually get around competition to make sure that everybody uh, has enough resources. So one of those is called competitive exclusion. And so in competitive exclusion, one of the populations is going to be able to use the resource more effectively. And because it uses that resource more effectively, they are going to end up with a reproductive advantage. Um, and over time, that will eventually eliminate the other population in that region. So another way that they can get around this is resource partitioning. And so with resource partitioning, you're going to have division of resources by those species. That way they each can survive in that same area. So moving on to predation. So predation is going to be a positive minus interaction. So that means that one species is going to benefit and the other one is going to be negatively affected. So in predation, one species will kill and eat the other. And so there are um, also a couple ways that prey can avoid being uh, eaten. One of those ways is camouflage. Uh, a great example would be, you know, just a chameleon, something that everybody's familiar with. We can have bright coloring. So bright coloring tends to indicate to predators that the prey that they're hunting is uh, potentially toxic. Then we can also have different kinds of mimicry. So one kind of mimicry is called Batesian mimicry. And so in Batesian mimicry, a harmless species is going to make itself look like an unpalatable or a harmful species to which it is not closely related. So for example, in this picture, this is actually an octopus. And so what it's doing here is it's lengthening itself to make it look like it's a sea snake. So this harmless species is resembling a harmful species that it is not closely related to. Therefore, this would be an example of Batesian mimicry. So another kind of mimicry is Mullerian mimicry. And so that's going to be reciprocal mimicry by two unpalatable species. So that would be if, um, for example, two butterflies that did not uh, taste good or had bitter tastes were um, mimicking one another with their wing coloration, even though both of them are unpalatable. So next we'll look at herbivory. So in herbivory, that's going to be a positive negative interaction again, because one organism is going to eat a part of a plant. So with parasitism, that's going to be a positive minus interaction in which one organism, which would be the parasite, uh, is going to benefit by feeding on another organism, which will be our host, which is in turn harmed by the parasites uh, feeding. And so you can have two kinds of parasites. We can have an endoparasite or an ectoparasite. And so an endoparasite, like this tapeworm, means something that lives inside the host. Whereas an ectoparasite, like a tick, is going to be something that lives on the outside of the host. So next we'll look at positive interactions. So in positive interactions, we uh, can find uh, mutualism. So mutualism is going to be a plus-plus interaction in which both species are benefited. And so in any sort of interaction and where both species are receiving some sort of positive outcome from that interaction, that's going to be mutualism. And then lastly, we have commensalism. 
So commensalism is a plus zero interaction. And so what that means is one organism is going to benefit and then the other organism isn't helped or harmed by that interaction. So for example, we have um, this cattle egret. And so what happens is as this, I don't know, some sort of cattle moves through the grass, it's going to kick up bugs. And as it kicks up bugs moving through the grass, the cattle egrets are going to eat those bugs. And so the egrets are helped by this interaction, but the cattle is neither helped nor harmed. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in this video will be true no matter what biology class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services in our tutoring center, which is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website, which is www.baylor.edu forward slash tutoring. You can schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.